CMT Stuttgart, which I believe is the second largest RV show in the world. Could be wrong on that one, but let's just make it clear. It is the second largest RV event in Europe. So I'm standing here at the eastern entrance and uh, people are now uh, sort of, as many people are leaving as are coming in. Indeed, the event's only got another, what, an hour and a half or so to actually run when it's open to the public. Uh, this has been for me, uh, um, on a personal basis, for starting off, but it, didn't, it wasn't uh, on for three years. Yeah, I haven't made my mind up which way I'm going to go yet. Three years without the event running because of COVID. And so uh, what we can see here is, uh, to a large extent, we see most of the innovations uh, on the market which appear at the Dusseldorf Trade Fair, which is held in August and September. So we see at the end of August, the announcements of what's gonna be on RV ranges for 2023. Hello, Mo, it's 4.35 a.m. in New Zealand, so it's, uh, here it's what about uh, it's six I don't know what's the time now 16 something here so it's tw there's 12 hours difference between here and uh, and New Zealand so um, the uh, uh, this this event here despite the fact of all the problems that exist at the moment on the RV market it's absolutely it's full and um, uh, there, it, it, uh, there seems to be no more space for anybody else and you might think this is a bit strange because in the first place most RV producers are having difficulty producing people are ordering vehicles uh, they don't know when they're going to turn up they don't know if they get an automatic gearbox or a manual gearbox they don't know what color the vehicle's going to be at the front it's a good job that most RVs are white because if they weren't then there'd be all sorts of uh, problems so uh, despite these problems and there's another thing now we've got economic uncertainty uh, fuel prices are going up uh, there seems to be a certainly is a collapse in the housing market not that maybe exaggerating that one a bit but there's there's pressure on the housing market sorry I'll, I'll, I'll rephrase that pressure on the housing market in Scandinavia and that will obviously reflect how people make purchasing decisions uh, all of this combined and you might think that there'd be less interest in motorhomes well on the first weekend here there were 80,000 people now uh, to put that into context on 10 days at Dusseldorf you expect around 200,000 plus now okay I mean I do appreciate the weekends you get far more people uh, than you do uh, at other times so that in itself is not the best guide but anyway so rather than me uh, looking at me rabbiting on uh, why don't we do it this way that I'm gonna turn the camera around I'll continue to rabbit on but I'll show you some of the stuff which is here I'm um, so I'm just gonna move slightly the camera over I don't like doing this with one hand because I had an incident where I did something like that and the camera fell out and there was 300 euros of repairs to the camera. Here we've got some off-road caravans. I suppose that's the right word for them. And so from, from really big things to quite small things. Now, as I don't tend to do this type of thing, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you down into the motorhome section. And down here, what we've got, uh, we've got down here, Burstner vans, we've got Heimer over there, uh, LMC, Leica, and Trigano. Trigano, so I'll take it there, and this is one of uh, seven holes, I think I said the wrong number in another video, uh, which are currently full of vehicles. Vehicles which are now 20 to 30 percent more well easily than when this event was held last time and another thing which we see which we didn't really see in the past uh, last time this is a, was these vehicles the Ford Transit Custom okay there's one or two around but not like they are now they're all over the place and uh, vehicles like this okay this burst one here has actually got in the back you can see it's got a um, 
the back. We'll come inside. Uh, got a toilet there, and we've got a little, the fridge here. I think the fact you've got a toilet that's really important to me. Should have a toilet in a vehicle it means it's contained. I'll do a longer video on that uh, later. Here we'll take have a walker over here somewhere. Uh, I do like the small things, the six meter vehicles. This Elysio here, it's got a very large lounge. And if I remember rightly, the bed is in the, in the ceiling. Um, I can't say that as far as layouts are concerned, that um, we're seeing anything as dramatic changes. The dramatic change, as far as layouts is con are concerned, is the use of a different vehicle, which is the Ford uh, Transit. And the Ford Transit uh, gives uh, so many more possibilities for, uh, you, um, because of its height, it's, it's just a bit higher than the, um, uh, the, the, the Fiat Ducato. <laughs> but, it's uh, 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 extra 10 centimeters. You can do so much with it, which you can't do with other vehicles. Now, I want to take you around here, the Foster stand. Foster vehicles are available only in, um, uh, in the German speaking countries, but I've now seen them, uh, for example, on sites in the, uh, in the United Kingdom so they are getting out a bit i do believe very much in the, this short this thing here uh, short camper van is 541 centimeters in length and because it packs quite a lot in and this is my uh, uh preference over these short ford uh transit cust transit customs because this here you've got all of this storage you've got a proper bed and in here you've got a proper toilet and a proper shower and i don't like those sinks so much but never mind it's only 450 sorry 541 centimeters long so you, you can't really expect too much uh, uh so uh that to me this is uh sort of what a camper van should be it's got everything in it and uh that you could really need. I'm not onto the sort of VW lookalikes, uh, which you can't uh, really, they, they don't have much application. They look pretty cool on a video when they're parked next to the sea and somebody's in swimming in the sea, uh, but they're not so cool when you can't use the toilet or wash yourself afterwards. That is why I suggest a vehicle always with uh, a fully um self-contained as this one here is i've got all of this stuff inside uh, okay there's a cab over vehicle uh i think the cab overs they do burn a bit more fuel but what they've got is huge amounts of space inside and so uh sleeping up there okay why do you have the rear facing bench that is so that this here, this bit here, can turn into a bed. That's, that's what it is. This is a Sleep 6. This vehicle here is 699 centimeters in length. And so it's a Sleep 6. The trouble, of course, with the Sleep 6 is, uh, it's in here, in this room in here. Because in here, uh, bear in mind, you may have six people in the vehicle, but if it sleeps six, uh, then it's just going to have the same, the, the toilet capacity is the same and the water capacity is the same as though it slept two uh, uh, people. So that is the problem often. But huge amounts of storage in a relatively small footprint. Look at all that enormous uh, cupboard here. So a two burner sink in storage up there this is largely due to the fact that it goes up high so that's one thing i believe in is taking vehicles up a height getting more space inside them okay here's a six meter um camper van now what uh, is interesting about this is the uh, fact it's got a double uh, bunk bed at the back sleeps for 
I think it's a bit of a squash this one for sleeping. But I think the other ones that they just saw so sleeping six is a bit a bit of a squash. I do appreciate people have children, and that would of course work with children. This is a comparatively economic way. Now I'd say comparatively cost of fortune. This thing's going for about seventy thousand or sixty-five thousand or something. And uh, in the current in the current market, this van. Uh, last time this event was on would have been around 42 to 45 thousand euros Approximately that shows the I think Okay, well I've exaggerated the side by 60,000. Okay, but even so you've got the you got the impression uh, of what it is um, This is here an integrated foster van so you can see integrated it means that the foster's actually done the front of it that is there a semi-integrated van so you see the front of it's a fiat ducato and uh, the advantage of something like that is well uh, <laughs> it's the windscreen if you, the windscreen goes then you can actually uh, get another one this thing here i think i think this it's easier to get into the engine also with a, a semi-integrated but this actually i think offers more space uh, inside so to speak but at the same time, I also think it looks more like a, a motorhome, uh, if you follow my way of thinking. I, I like the idea of having all that space up there. I get the impression that when I'm driving something like this, is that um, I feel a bit intimidated. I do appreciate it's no wider than a, a, a semi-integrated, but, but because I've got the whole width in front of me, I, I do feel intimidated. And not only that, I know I'm not the only one who feels intimidated because Cartago has introduced a more pointy front to, to help people who are thinking the same as I do. As often you get with these things, there is a bed over the... Uh, over the front, over the cabin, got here what I term German layout at the back, a uh, bed on either side, there's be some cushions here, the place here, they put plates to put over here, enormous bed at the back, storage under there, shower to my right, toilet to my left, fridge to my left, and kitchen with two burners. Two burners is the in thing at the moment. I mean, you wouldn't want to be seen dead with three burners in your van. Enormous uh, um, garage at the back. You stick 150 kilos of stuff in there, which, you know, it is quite a lot. But there are those vans that we stick much more than that in the back. Um, I want, I'll show you this one here, this Dexter 570 on the Ford um, Transit uh, 4x4. Uh, this very impressive uh, technical details on the 4x4. Uh, some of the uh, I've seen actually, the, I was in one uh, which was being used at, 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 on a test run. It, it was pretty frightening, really, quite honest. The person I was driving it, the speeds he was doing it at. Uh, he, I'm sure he's trying to frighten me and he succeeded this one here has got this lengthwise bed two meters in length if you're not if you're a bit shorter yeah, then you can go for a widthwise bed at the back and that uh, will possibly uh, be uh, gives you gives you it's not possibly it'll give you more possibilities one of the possibilities it'll get is a forward facing bench uh, here okay it's made for two people the table all goes down there and the extra space gained by getting rid of the forward facing bench is that the bed can be made longer uh, here's the there's what the shower looks like toilet's been hidden by the shower uh still don't know these things are called in english uh, paravan in polish um and uh here we have the the kitchen two burners quite quite standard let's go and have a look at something else and uh, here's a uh, Here's the, uh, another 4x4. Four four. This is the one with the forward facing bench. So you can see here a width wise bed at the back. And so it's got this, the bed is longer. It's 100 and 190 centimeters. The last one, 10 centimeters, in fact, uh, difference. But you've got the, because it goes width wise, you've got this forward facing bench there. So you can see where you're going. And uh, here, yeah, fridge that opens both ways. Uh, 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 for a six meter vehicle, that's a pretty decent uh, wet room. And there you can see 
the uh, storage around the bed. Up here, we've got a wardrobe, and at the bottom of the wardrobe, this bit here will come out so you can have stuff falling down inside should you so design not see yourself in the mirror as you're uh, leaving the, uh, the the vehicle um i've mentioned this port um transit custom now there's two sizes uh which this is the 535 centimeter version this is called a duncan this has got a toilet it's got a shower it's not a very big one but it's got a toilet and a shower in a vehicle which in height is only 204 centimeters high and we can come around here and we can see the um see the way it's been laid out so you've got your bed like that and sometimes they have these mattress toppers as well. To be quite honest, it's not particularly comfortable sleeping on belts and things. But but uh, it's uh, uh, it, it got the possibility of sleeping in the roof where I am right now. Got a kitchen at the side, and even with the roof down, you can actually still use the kitchen. You can still use the shower, the toilet, and. Um, so you're stuck on the motorway, need to get into the toilet quickly, you can do that. I certainly can't do that with a car. This vehicle, I think, is pretty good. It wouldn't suit me because I need more space for all the junk I'm carrying around with me. But for people who want a car and they want the, or a car they can sleep in or something like that, that's great. What is not so great is this one here. 495 centimetres in length. That is 40 centimetres smaller. What's this one got? Well, it's got next to nothing. Got some seats in it, which form a bed. You've got a kitchen over there. No toilet and uh, no shower. Just the kitchen. What's the price difference? I'm glad you asked that one because there isn't. It's more or less the same price. Why would anybody therefore take this one over the other one? It could be that they don't have the space for the other one. I don't know. That's the only thing I can actually think of. Um, so, oh, another thing I want to point out though is this, this um, um, Carmen Mobile to come up with this really nice colours here. Look, this one's here got the Stuttgart, this red. We've got this uh, iconography, this panorama of Stuttgart. Uh, here's Heidelberg uh, on this one, all places in Baden-Württemberg, uh, or, and, uh, or the area, sorry, it's Heidelberg and Baden-Württemberg, can't remember. <laughs> and uh, here, this is Heilbronn, if I remember rightly. And, uh, okay, so in this, in this area and I'm thinking it's, he it's Heidelberg Hess I, I can't remember <laughs> anyway um, good on this one here this is a 4x4 Duncan that so that's this this bright red one but in 4x4 format 495 centimeters in length uh, got the tent in the roof it hasn't got a toilet don't want something without a toilet hey, that's my way of looking at things okay good so uh, there's a quick look around here at Carmen Mobile. Um, I just sort of made this one make made this one up as it's a live thing as uh, as and when I came to it, but I'll pick other other com company. You see, I sort of went here because I saw there was fewer people actually on the the stand here. Hello, hello uh, studio. Uh, are you like the vehicles? Yes, they are. I mean this is they are pretty good here, I think. You will see a huge difference, of course, between the vehicles which you can get here in Europe compared to those which are available in uh, other uh, in America, for example, particularly in South America, where I think most of the vehicles, um, either local or they come from the, uh, uh, the, 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 the United States. Hello, uh, uh, Max, Maxim Wood uh, from, in Russia. Hello, hello. So anyway, I'm going to show you now around the uh, Leica stand and uh, so I mentioned this Ford Transit Custom which I'm not at all keen this is your case we saw from a different company uh, so they're competing on using very similar the same vehicle and sort of similar designs I can't see the point of this one at all two rear facing seats here two forward facing seats here. now this is great as a taxi a taxi and um, taxi we can actually do some cooking when you're there and there's a fridge over there bit of storage there 
can't see its application really as a, as a motorhome uh, or as a camper van. Okay, you've got a tent in the roof, so if it was a taxi and it was taking some time to get there, uh, you could go up in the, in, the, in, the, in the tent and have a sleep. Uh, maybe that's the objective. Yeah, I'll show you one or two others though. This I like this thing here. This is a compact Leica uh, motorhome, seven meters in length, and for a price of a hundred and twenty-three thousand euros. That's right, hundred twenty-three thousand. Hello, Luke. Can you say my friend Martin, who just turned? Hello, Martin. How are you doing? Uh, this Leica here. Right there, you go. So it's um, got the integrated front to it. You see how the chair's been put down like that? That is to allow the bed to drop down. Let's see if I can get the bed to drop down. Probably can't. Let's see if I can get it to drop down now. Can't. Something's holding it back. I'm not going to find out what. Never mind. Have to do that some other time. Double floor. Storage in the double floor. Uh, nice looking at the back. Okay. Six meter integrated motorhomes are fantastic. Please show it to us more. Yeah, well, I would love to show more of them, but there's not many of them. This is this is a problem. And uh, six meters, yeah. You get one or two, seven meters, yeah, that's not so much a problem, even six and a half meters. Six meter integrated, there really is very few vans like that. We've got this huge in this one here, this storage under the bed, sensible sliding door. Uh, one of the problems are here, it's, it's the width once more, it's 235 centimetres across at the front, which is uh, quite, qu <laughs> quite, uh, quite a lot really. Um, but uh, I do appreciate that, you know, it's trying to put a lot of stuff in them and seven, um, uh, seven metres in length. Uh, so you want, one's also thinking of stability at the same time. Uh, oh, let's have a have a look at here we've got a, a semi-integrated i'm sorry that's that's that is for the integrated one and there's another integrated at the other end uh semi-integrated vehicle uh, i've got the bed up there there are some brands we can hardly scarcely tell we've got a bed in the roof hello c hello hello and uh there a look at round the table here lots of space there double floor all the way back german layout uh, up here, I forgot to put some covers on the storage areas. Uh, fridge here. Let's have a look in the toilet. Light comes on when I open the door. Oh, it's nice. Yeah, it's a nice washroom. This isn't it. And also, this is a false wall, which that goes there like that, and I can open the false wall. The trouble with these false walls is that often what happens is that they they break and that's that happened to me so and the people in the repair place said yeah just don't leave it open all the time because that's how they get people in complaining non-stop there we've got the door closed like that that looks like a ladder um do uh, right my do globe uh i think do gro globe travel does globe traveler from poland produce motorhomes no globe traveler only produces camper vans it has produced uh, for this year i'll do I'll, I'll show it to you in a different video it's in a different hall though um that um they have produced one which they say is for full timers and it's on a man base it is certainly not for full timers because it's got uh next to no storage in it i don't know why they said that but it's certainly some don't know anybody who's a full-time motorhomer that accepts a motor a, a camper van uh, with next to no storage here yeah, this like it'll cost 110,000 111,000 german layer they've all got a german layer do they import to new zealand it's yeah okay i'm gonna have to rephrase that one mo do they export to <laughs> new zealand this would depend on finding somebody who was uh, wanted to be a dealer of any uh, vehicle. Now, um, as far as New Zealand's concerned, as Klaus, Klaus Tabert, I think, do. Um, um, a British company does. What, what? Can't remember. There's a British company, and uh, the other one is oh, Death Lefts do. I'm a bit stuck on others. Okay. See here, this is a. This one here is almost 200,000 uh, integrated from Leica. Right, oh, very good. 
Okay, so there's a quick look around uh, here. Um, LMC, this is the Heimer group that we've got here. But I think I'm gonna have to end for today. There will be, oh, I wanna show you this quickly. This is a 100,000 euro camper van uh, from Leica and it's got a rear lounge. Uh, once showed a Spanish company with interesting layouts. I think that was Benimar, probably. Oh no, it could have been Illusion. Illusion, I think that would have been. Illusion are not here. Uh, Benimar is here, but uh, no, I'm certain it's Illusion that you're referring to because Illusion have these really non standard uh, layouts. So, this, uh, okay, I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to leave it at that for today. Uh, so I'm sort of running out of uh, energy to uh, uh, nice van luscious it is. Yeah, it's really, yeah, it, 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 yeah it's nice. A bit expensive though. Uh, anyway, I shall leave this here. And uh, so, uh, Illusion, yes. Thanks very much everybody came in uh, today and watched this. There's a video tonight at the usual time. I, don't, I can't even remember which one it is actually because I set the, I set the things up um, in advance and uh, it's a case of when I, um, I do that much in advance. I can't, I, I don't really have the time to sort of, um, when I'm here, to um, load videos up from here. Uh, because it takes a little bit of time, got to write, write them. Thanks, thanks, see, thanks, have a nice day. Also, all the best from me in Stuttgart, Germany. Bye for now.